The NCAA is useless. Hi everybody, I'm Marky Bilson. This isn't a new theme that I have given to people. I have mentioned how the NCAA, I think, is so afraid that the major conferences are going to break off. They basically don't give out punishments anymore. I mean, when was the last time you had a TV ban? Of course, uh, nowadays that'd be cutting off your nose to spite your face if you ever wanted to give the TV ban to a corrupt program. But, uh, I've just mentioned this Penn State for, you know, not doing anything about child molestation in their midst, got two years of a bull ban. If you go back a generation to the 1980s, when Clemson was given probation because a booster, not the school itself, but a booster, gave a player who never played a game for Clemson, either $500 or $1,000, depending on who you talk to, Clemson got a three-year bull ban. So the NCAA there, I mean, it's just, you know, these days they're just so afraid of the, the schools, you know, going away from their little nest egg and all this. They do not want to come down hard on the programs and such. And I think also showing how the NCAA is useless was the ruling that came out that the spring athlete, let's say the baseball player, can come back for his senior season next year. You know, the COVID-19 quarantine, they've canceled the college baseball season halfway through it. So, hey, you can come back. Now, the basketball player is not given the same opportunity, but that, when we talked a little bit about that before, that was a whole other kettle of fish. And really, the idea was, well, you, they should come back so that they can play in the NCAA tournament, but there was no guarantee that if they did come back, that they would play in the NCAA tournament. So, you know, it is tough luck for the senior basketball player who missed out on the NCAA tournament. But again, you know, are you going to give that senior the chance to come back? What about the senior who played on a basketball team with a losing record? You know, it, it would seem like this is the rich get richer if you're allowing uh, the players that were going to be on the in the NCAA to come back, but not the players with uh, on teams that are losing records. It just doesn't seem fair uh, from that standpoint. And quite frankly, a lot of the coaches that were pushing for the uh, return of the seniors so that they might be able to play in the NCAA tournament, Steve Forbes, East Tennessee State, is a good example of this. He had five scholarships to give out. You know, he had five seniors, and he already was recruiting, you know, incoming players to take those scholarships and all this. I mean, there was never a real belief that I think those basketball players were going to be able to come back for another senior season. Baseball, it's a little bit different. Uh, most of the conference schedules were not played, like I said, just a, about a month, uh, maybe some February games, early March, that sort of thing. But here's the deal. Baseball scholarships and really spring scholarships is a whole different deal in the NCAA uh, than, say, football scholarships. A football team gets 85 scholarships. A baseball team gets 11.7. Uh, it takes nine men, 10 with a DH, to play baseball. And you're given 11.7 scholarships. Think about this for a second. And very few baseball players get full scholarships. In fact, very few baseball programs even get the 11.7 scholarships. Uh, most of the time it's uh, given to, you know, because of Title IX, I say most of the time, uh, a lot of the time, colleges have to make do with less than 11.7 scholarships, including uh, some major college programs and such. And, you know, you want to talk about why baseball has gone beyond football in terms of popularity in this country. Well, let's face it. I mean, Rob Manfred shouldn't be concerned about intentional walks or Chief Wahoo or something like that. You ought to be concerned about this discrepancy. You know, the baseball player has about a seventh of the opportunity, if not actually an eighth of the opportunity, somewhere there, to get a college scholarship that the football player does. How's that right? How does that work? Hmm. And then you see why there's so much talk about reducing clutter in the minor leagues and such and reducing some of them. Anyway, uh, the, the thing is, though, that in baseball... 
uh, they're not going to give any new scholarships out, and so that's how is this going to be handled. And what's going to happen is that a lot of seniors are just going to say, well, thanks, but no thanks. Because the idea to come back for the senior season, oh yeah, you can do it, but you're probably not going to have a full scholarship, so it's, oh yes, you can come back for your senior year, but just like before, you'll have to pay for it. So it kind of works it, itself out in that regard. It is not necessarily the same uh, thing that the football player has with the baseball player uh, when they're coming back. And I do wonder a little bit about how college baseball coaches will handle this, because you know if you can say to a senior baseball player, "Look, I'm gonna, you will be my starting shortstop. You will have the chance for that, you know, major league draft choice or something." I will let you come back now, especially now with the coronavirus scare. Are you going out and trying to recruit newcomer, new players in? Newcomers. Probably not as hard. And that's another interesting thing that comes about with this. By the way, we are joined by a uh, football coach here. Jackie Sherrill is watching us right now on Facebook Live. So I'd love to hear his feedback on uh, on this and such. Uh, but like I said, you get the feeling there's going to be a lot of haves and have-nots right here. Again, yeah, you can come back, but, oh, you had a half scholarship before? Well, that might be a quarter scholarship now. That might be no scholarship. Or... It might take away an opportunity from an incoming freshman. Now, there is one thought that I did have, and that is, since there aren't any games or practices right now, coaches could really go to their players right now and really put, hey, guys, get straight A's. Get straight A's, and, and maybe we can get an academic scholarship here. Yeah. You know... <sighs> The fact that a lot of people right now are probably saying and laughing to themselves when I say that, that's not funny. That's tragic that you would consider, hey, go and study harder now that you are have the opportunity. Try to get that academic scholarship. Oh, no, they won't do that. It's tragic that that's a philosophy and perhaps a reality uh, in college baseball or college uh, sports in general right now. Anyway... Uh, I do want to say this, that right now I saw where Donald Trump is meeting with the commissioners of the various sports, including entities that might not be sports. He's meeting with Vince McMahon, and not because of the XFL, no, because of the WWE. And it's to talk about how sports will handle uh, the coronavirus scare, when will they come back, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. There is one major sports entity, however, I mean, the MLS is in on this, uh, certainly baseball, the WNBA, there are a lot of sports, uh, Ultimate Fighting, Dana White, it's not a surprise that he would be involved in a meeting with Donald Trump, certainly, about how to get sports back on track, their, their meeting today, but there's one major sports entity that isn't being represented. Yeah, the NCAA. You know, the NCAA is going to stick around, I've said a long time. They need a real commissioner, somebody like a Roger Goodell or an Adam Silver or something like this. And the fact that basically the NCAA is, I guess, not involved in this meeting, that their president or that there aren't any conference commissioners meeting and talking about coming back and, you know, how to get college football going next year or, uh, you know, what have you. That really speaks volumes, and it also tells me the NCAA is becoming more and more useless. Folks, I'm Marky Vilson. If you like this video uh, and you're watching on YouTube, what I ask you to do is to follow me on YouTube, where you'll be able to see more than a thousand videos that I've put up, much like this, uh, archives of my own sports talk show, as well as what's on my mind right now. And so I ask you to, you know, hit subscribe, click the bell. Uh, also, follow me on Medium.
where I'm still putting up columns and the like. And by the way, I've been talking to many radio stations about a position, and uh, that's going to happen, I'm sure, quite soon. But until then, uh, I ask that you follow me on YouTube, and after then, I also ask that you follow me on YouTube. Check out the archives, the things that I've been saying here, as well as my recent podcast, and you can see, in fact, why it would have been a bad idea for the NCAA to let the basketball player come back for his senior year because it just would have been a tremendous kettle of fish. You think baseball is going to be a bad kettle of fish? Oh, yeah. Incidentally, Jackie Sherrill, if you're still out there, I'm kind of curious here. Why didn't you let Dan Marino play in the Federation League back in the day? You know, wouldn't Bobby Lewis, you know, wouldn't that have been a thing? Mike Ditka played baseball and uh, football at, the, uh, at Pitt. So did Kervin Richards. And just sort of, anyway, <laughs> give you Doc Medic, you know, and all. <laughs> Giving you a hard time. <laughs> Love to know, though. I will, uh, but until next time, like I said, subscribe on YouTube, and we'll be back with another commentary later on today.